Hey, Buff Nation, voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson here. Coming up this week on a holiday edition of the Buffalo Stampede, we're talking with a Buffs great Richard Roby was back on campus. He played for the Buffaloes back in the early 2000s. Also talking women's basketball. They remain undefeated as they wrap up non-conference play. Head coach Carl Durrell talking recruiting at his new signing class. And we say goodbye to one of our good friends, Jill Mahoney, the Dobo for women's basketball. All this week on the Buffalo Stampede. Dimitri Stanley's going to take it to the house. Place here is why he's one of the best linebackers in America. And there he goes. Touchdown. <laughs> right between the eyes from downtown. And a boy, Lolo. <laughs> it's a winner for the Bob. <laughs> Wallace right in front. A couple of shots made to see Perry. Right Hall finds a seam, drives, kick out the corner. Roby pulls up three ball jumper. Nothing but the bomb of the net for Richard Roby. There's the turnover. Roby trailing, sets up, fires from 25, and he hits from downtown. Why Rich had about another six feet or so against pointers. And the freshman Roby with a one-handed flush with the right hand. As Colorado attacks, four court right. Gives it a backdoor cut to Roby all by himself. Oh, side to Thorne. Back up top to Rich. Drives on the right side, spins on his way to the hoop, lays it up, and in counted. The whistle and the foul. Oh, was that guy good back in the day? No doubt about it. Welcome to Buffalo Stampede. Voice of the bus, Mark Johnson. The young fellow you were just looking at, he doesn't look any different, does he? Richard <laughs> Roby joining us. He was here for the Buffaloes, a great player. Oh, five, six, seven, and eight. Yes, sir. And here you are. What was those highlights, man? How about that young fella, huh? Yeah, you know, I wish I could still jump like that. <laughs> Today, I might still be playing. <laughs> what do you think back to your four years? And, boy, the numbers you put up. Those were my first four years here when I was doing the Buffs games 18 seasons ago. Average about 17 a game, five and a half, six rebounds, two, three assists per ball game. Maybe the wins weren't as many as we wanted back then, For right? Sure. Yeah, <laughs> what do you think about when you look back to that period? You know, it was a – I have great memories. You know, we, we're definitely transitioning. I love where the – uh, where the program is now and, and how it's progressed and it's just great to come back and see that happening for the guys and you know I think I had I, I feel like I was a part of that transitioning and so it feels good to be back. Yeah well that question you know, take people kind of down memory lane with you a little bit uh, after CU mm -hmm. you know, you've had four great seasons here talk about where you went and, and what you did. So after my four years here I, uh, my first two years I played in Israel then I played in Europe a little while and I finished my career in Japan I played five years down there um, so you know, a lot of my, most of my children, their childhood was spent in Japan. So, you know, but it was great. You know, we got a chance to see the world with my family, got to do what I love. So I, I really feel blessed to have that opportunity. You know, we were talking earlier and I said, Rich, how, how many countries were in? Would you say nine? Nine. Nine I could, and I, ten years. Yeah, yeah, I could have named all of them, but we have, I know there's a time, you know, so I just go jump to the, to the major ones. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's an interesting existence. And I know the guys have done, you know, Josh Scott's playing overseas. Yep. A lot of guys, Skip Booker, a lot of guys playing overseas right now. There's some very good basketball. It, it's very rewarding to go and do that, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, the, the game is so global now, and players are getting better all over the world, and it's just that much competitive. So, you know, you have to de definitely be on your P's and Q's, even though you come from here now. Before you go over there, you can just dominate. It's not like that anymore. You always have to be working on your game to really, you know, put yourself at the highest level. I remember a few years ago, I ran into Dominic Coleman, who was a great player here for the Colorado Buffalo. You guys didn't cross over. Yeah, we did. We played We played two years together. Okay, I was, I was yeah. trying to remember. Yeah. You know, Dom was saying, he said, on top of the fact I got paid to play basketball, mm -hmm. made nice money, yeah. I got to travel the world. Absolutely. He said the education I got was unbelievable. Absolutely. I mean, that culture you get and how it humbles you to, to be able to travel and, and see the things that you see and feel how blessed you are to be here and, and, and you know, get that opportunity. Because I, if I don't went to the NBA, I may not have, never had that opportunity That's to right. see the world. And so, you know, it definitely was a blessing. Remind Buffs fans, how did you end up becoming a Buffalo coming from California? Well, um, one of my good friends was here, Antoine McGee. Yeah. You know, um, so we, we grew up together and, you know, and I, Coach Patton, you know, came and we had a great relationship, you know, with him and my mom and we just connected. And when I came here, it just felt right. And, you know, I, I wanted the opportunity to play in the Big 12. And it, it's not too far from home because I came from prep school back right. east. So, you know, I, I came a little bit closer. So it was, it was good. You look around this building right now. You have some great moments here. Yep. Give me one that stands out. Since we're playing Kansas, I did dunk on a couple players right on this court, <laughs> so they might want to play that highlight too. You know, even though we Love never it. beat Kansas, yeah. that was that, that was a win for me. We, we got to find that one. <laughs> Absolutely. That's good. Stuff. Senior year, so you can find it. <laughs> and interestingly, when we were walking out here on the court, I said, "When's the last time you're back?" You were here for a football game. Yep. But you hadn't been back on this court for a game. Nope. 
since you left. Absolutely. I, I went to, I don't know if it was last year or the year before they played in Vegas yeah. in a tournament. I went to that game, but I haven't been back here for a game. Nope. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited. Now, here's the thing. The playing career might be over for uh, Richard right now. So tell us what you're doing, number one. Right. So I, I do financial services. I'm okay. a broker at my office in Las Vegas. We're just, you know, helping people build their financial security, build wealth, and, you know, really teaching people financial literacy, yeah. something that a lot of people don't get a chance to, to Where would that come from? Uh, you know, just being bad with money. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I looked at my career, I'm like, you know, I'm making good money, but I never really was educated on what to do with it. So sure. I wanted to educate myself and I just felt like, you know, more people need to hear this, especially athletes. And, you know, now it's, now it's people in general, I know need it as well. So I just, I became really passionate about it. And you know, I just fell in love with the business. When we ran into each other in the hallway, I said, well, I know you had one daughter. You've got four now, yeah. right? Yep. And another one, on the way. Yeah, we don't know if it's a girl yet, okay. so y'all gotta pray for me, you know, so <laughs> I told her it's a boy this time, I promised her, so, you know, but it, it's exciting, you know, so my, my dad had a lot of children, so I guess I get it from him, too. Right. <laughs> you just have to plan to just keep going into no, it? No, 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 this is absolutely <laughs> done, you know, signed, sealed, you know, right. it's, it's, it's over. <laughs> will you Will you encourage your daughters to be athletes? You know, they, they, they played volleyball this year in, in middle school, and right. they just made the basketball team. You know, I wish I would have, um, you know, got them in a little bit earlier, but we're overseas a lot. But, you know, if that's what they want to do, is want to do. But right. you know, as long as they're happy. All right. Who was a better athlete, you or your wife? Me, of oh. course. Oh. You know, she, 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 her career ended a long time ago. You know, mine progressed a little longer. Great catching up with you. Appreciate it, man. One of the greats. And I'm telling you, this guy was a phenomenal player when I first got here back in that 05, 6, 7, 8 season. Richard Roby joining us here at the Buffalo Stampede. Coming up next, we're going to talk undefeated women's basketball here at CU. and another steal for Tuatele. Now, Finau step back for a three. Yeah! Mia dribbles right, and Kendall Weta able to knock the ball away, and ahead to Maya. Maya's all by herself, and she will lay it up and in. For Miller on the right side wing. Miller drives in, spins back. Beautiful move, and she flips it up. Kendall to Quay up top. Quay for a three, and she got it to go. Front extended, the Weta fires for a three. Yeah! There's some great highlights from the Colorado women's basketball victory over San Francisco. The Buffaloes 11-0 wrapping up non-conference plays. They now head to Pac-12 conference play. Buffaloes also ranked inside the top 25. After the victory over the Dons, we heard from head coach J.R. Payne, Maya Hollingshed, and Kendall Weta. Yeah, really excited for how we played. We knew that it would be a total team effort for us to be successful tonight. Defensively, we knew Kendall, Jalen, you know, different people would really have to step up and guard their best player. But our effort was really pretty good. You know, we can't coach a perfect game as far as going 100% from the floor or stopping them from scoring ever. Um, but our effort is totally in our control and our team played really, really hard tonight. Super proud of us, excited for, you know, being undefeated in the preseason and even more excited for Pac-12 play to start. Yeah, it does feel different, I think, just because of the culture that we've created. But it's just a different feel when you come in, the energy is just different. It just feels like everybody's dialed in, locked in, ready to, you know, we all have the same goal and I think we're all buying in, into that and we're just listening to the coaches and just trying to do everything we can. It's really nice and I think that's going to be something that's going to be a big strength this year is that you can pretty much put anybody at any spot and we can you know, do very well still, and there's not much of a drop off. So yeah. it's a good thing for our team. Miller on the right side wing. Miller drives in, spins back. Beautiful move as she flips it up. Hey, what's up, Buff Nation? This is Josh McCowan, and I'm sitting here in my office, and we have a lot of jerseys on the wall here, but we're adding a special one today when my son Owen signs with the Colorado Buffaloes. We are so proud of him and so thankful to Coach Carl Durrell and his staff for recruiting Owen. This Strictly Business 2022 class is going to be special and a huge piece in what Coach Carl Durrell is building there in Boulder. We look forward to watching them compete for Pac-12 championships and national titles. As my boy Brandon McCartney likes to say, we are wired, fired, and inspired. Let's go Buffaloes. Let's go Buffs. 18-year NFL veteran Josh McCowan, his son Owen, by the way, signing with the Colorado Buffaloes as we just had National Letter of Intent signing day here at the University of Colorado. In fact, we sat down with head coach Carl Durrell to talk about his brand new class. Nobody's got a bigger smile today than this guy here, the head coach of your Colorado Buffaloes, coming off his second season, signing his third class. We've got to talk about the uniqueness, though, of this third class, the head coach, Carl Durrell, are you like an expectant father today? How do you feel on, on National Signing Day? <laughs> I do feel that way in, in, a, in a lot of ways. But, yeah, it's a great day. And, and uh, you know, we had our staff that was here at 4.30 in the morning, you know, waiting for the Eastern uh, commits to sign. And 
But it's an exciting day. These guys and these families that we've got a chance to cultivate and, and build relationships with, they're coming on board. They understand the, you know, really the out, you know, what's going on with our program, how we're moving forward. They're a big part of that. So there's a lot of excitement right now. As we well know, recruiting the, the lifeblood of any program, of course. What's unique about this for Carl Durrell, you think about this for a second. He just finished year number two on the field. This is the first time that Carl and his staff have gone out and actually recruited players. You think about it, got here late for year number one, cobbled yeah. together a very good uh, class. Last year, you know, last year was last year with COVID. You had to do it that way. This is the first time you've actually been able to go out and sit in someone's living room and have a conversation with them. Absolutely, and that felt great, to be yeah. honest with you. We finished our season with the last game versus Utah. You know, we played hard. I think we finished the game with a great effort and attitude in terms of what we need to go going forward. And then that allowed me that next day, that, last, that next evening, to get down to Atlanta and see some families and some of our commits. And it started in Atlanta and went through California, back to Texas, you know, over. I've been in a lot of different places in the last two weeks. But, you know, they're all excited. They all ex are excited about the brand of football that we're, we're building here. You know, they see it coming. They see where their roles are. Uh, and they're just great people. So it's a great class that has, that has a lot of competitiveness, a lot of confidence in themselves. Uh, it's, it's, it's set to do great things, and we've got a great foundation. Our team played hard this year. Obviously, it was challenging in terms of wins and losses, but I love the effort of how this team finished the season, and they're excited about the offseason. You know, usually at this point in time, they're not talking about the offseason. They want a break from football, but these guys all left today after finals saying, you know, I can't wait to get back to start this process of, you know, of the 22 season. So their mindset's right. You know, the, the, the talent and the players that we're putting in, bringing into this program is the right type of guys. So I think we're going to be a year better, obviously more experienced, more developed, stronger, bigger, faster, all those things. And this definitely, we're in the right direction. We're heading in the right direction. So be, please be excited about what the process is because I know our players are. And, you know, we just need that belief in you just as much as we believe in ourselves as a program that we're, we're on the right track to doing some great things. Well, a great class signed by head coach Carl Durrell for the Buffs football program. As we wrapped up the day, by the way, we got a great message from one of the most passionate Buffs we all know. Philip Lindsay had some inspiring words for New Buffaloes. Inside the five, and Lindsay leads four down to the one he's in. Touchdown, Colorado. And they'll give it to Lindsay. He pushes it. So I grew up in Denver, Colorado, born and raised. I ended up playing ball at uh, Denver South. I actually got uh, offered by University of Colorado, Coach B and me, who, who coaches for the, the Chiefs, he, he's the one that kind of got me uh, excited to go to the University of Colorado. You know, it was in my own, own backyard. I had the opportunity for my parents to be able to watch me play, and I didn't have to go too far from home, so everything was comfortable. Yeah, I wanted to help me build a program. I wanted to be a part of something special. When the, the papers came in, the fax machine for me to sign uh, my letter of intent, it was very emotional, very exciting that I got to uh, play college ball in my home state. You know, I know for a fact that that was the right move looking at me now and how it's taught me about life and becoming a young man. When you want something as bad as you, you truly want to and you love the game and you love what comes with it, you're going to give everything you got. And what that means is no matter what, it's taking care of your body, it's finding ways to, to help yourself be a better person. You know, set those goals and, and, and go with it. Uh, my best friend was Chido Bear Wuzie, who plays with the, the Bengals. We grinded with each other. We pushed each other. You know, we, we were not going to be denied having success in college. Lindsay. Lindsay! Lindsay! Touchdown, Colorado! He kept on pushing each other, and if he did something better, I wanted to be even better than him. So, like, it, it just kept us motivated, and it showed on the field. A Pac-12 South Division title, and a trip to the Pac-12 championship game. The, the players that, that got recruited with me, that signed their letter of intent, we all stuck together. You know, we end up, our junior and senior year, we end up having the, the, the greatest moments of our life and a lot of them end up going to the next level because of that. The Dallas Cowboys select defensive back from Colorado, Kidobi Awuzie. 
And, and you know, we stuck together though. You know, we worked hard, we grind. You know, we, we were just dogs. The opportunity that you young men are going to have starting when you sign that letter of intent is, is going to be magical. If you guys stick together, you guys are going to, to do some pretty amazing things. You guys may have some ups and downs and that's life and that's what's going to build character with you. But I'm telling you, if you guys stick together, you guys enjoy each other, enjoy being, being in this atmosphere, this college situation, you guys are going to have the greatest, greatest moments of your life, man. Make no mistake, man. If you're ready to play some football and win and try to go for a national championship, the University of Colorado is where it's at. Go out there, be dedicated, blood, sweat, and tears, fight for your brother next to you, and everything will go your way. Go Buffs. Today's game is very bittersweet because while we are wildly excited about being undefeated and playing a great game and beating a good team, Tonight, today is the last game that Joe Mahoney will be with us here at CU. And for those of you that have been around our program, you know that Joe Mahoney is one of the hardest working, most selfless, most loving, caring individuals you could ever find. And these young ladies and all of us and all of you have been blessed by her presence for the last five years. We will miss her dearly. So go Buffs and we love you, Jill. Well, it was a tear-filled ceremony right here on the court at uh, the CU Event Center as the CU Women's Basketball Program said goodbye to their five-and-a-half-year double director of basketball operations, Jill Mahoney, who's moving on to a great new effort in her life. We talked about this one right here, good friend Jill Mahoney, the Dobo uh, Director of Basketball Operations for the CU Women with uh, head coach Sarah Payne just a moment ago, and you're leaving us. I am. What did I do? I <laughs> you did nothing. You, you, we, the best thing about you is we've become very good friends. Yes, we have. I mean, we, we do yeah. a lot of a lot of fun things together now. Yeah. Um, Had to yes, be a tough decision, right? It, uh, as we, we were laughing earlier, I'm a glass case of emotions because <laughs> this is one of the most difficult decisions I've ever made in my life. Yeah. So to leave a program that I love, to leave a boss in JR that is not just a boss, she's a best friend, right. is one of the most difficult difficult decisions I've ever made. So uh, wouldn't take it lightly by any means, right. um, but I feel like I can help in the community in a bigger role. Um, I've been called to do it, and I'm I'm ready for the challenge. All right, so there's a cliffhanger right here. We still haven't told you what she's doing. Before we do that, when we say Dobo, that, that's a phrase we use in the business, right? In sure. the world of college athletics. Sure. Explain to people what you do. So, director of basketball operations, and I do a lot. I do everything from travel to um, expense reports to um, helping our student athletes with anything from. Uh, where do I go, you know, change a battery to, <laughs> to uh, you know, uh, doing a home-cooked post-game meal for them. Yeah. Um, so I, I do a lot for them. I do a lot for our staff, but they give me a lot in return, a lot of love, a lot of thank yous. Um, this is a job that uh, my staff has done a great job of making sure that's appreciated. Yeah. And um, it, I've, this is one of the most, most, favorite jobs I've ever had, and that's what makes it so hard to leave. It's that position on a staff. Men have their guys in Bill Carton over mm -hmm. there. You're over on the women's side. Mm -hmm. When in question, go to Jill. Yes. Right? Yeah. That's kind of what happens. Yeah. And, and along with that, then, your relationship person, you get to have a great relationship with all these players. Absolutely. I, I try to think of this job as being a Swiss Army knife. Yeah. There might be things that you don't use but once a year and some things you use on a daily basis. And so um, it's been a great joy to do this. It's been a great joy to be a part of CU Buffs women's basketball and the CU Buffs athletic department. All right, we've kept the tears back and we haven't told you what she's gonna do to become a police officer for the city of Boulder. Now, where does that come from? <laughs> a lot of people have asked that. Um, I, I only have one relative um, that was in law enforcement in some aspect, was a jailer, 
okay. 50 years ago. But it's uh, I've always gravitated to towards law enforcement officers. I have a lot of friends that are law enforcement officers. And um, I've appreciated them my whole life. Uh, I did an internship in high school mm -hmm. with the uh, Russell Police Department. And so it's just been something as I've gone along that's always been an interest, but I've never left it because I love this so much. So that's a big, big part of not leaving. Um, but I just feel like I've been called to, to serve a bigger purpose. If you, if you know Jill like I do, you care about people. This is exactly kind of in your wheelhouse, I would think. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, you know, some people have said, why don't you stay at CU uh, Police Department? And I wanna, I wanna help a broader community. Sure. And so, but with that, I still get to help CU, which is a huge part of, of staying in Boulder. I love it here, I want this to be my home the rest of my life, and I have a big passion for Boulder and CU Athletics. How did the uh, meeting go when you told the team you were? Gonna be leaving. I bawled like a baby. <laughs> I bawled like a baby. I, I couldn't. I, yeah, it took about a minute for me to gather my composure and tell them. But that's why it's you know how blessed am I that yeah. leaving a job is so difficult. Right. Um, you know, some people leave and say deuces, and this is not this is not that way. So yeah. We promised we weren't gonna cry on camera here today. <laughs> All right, we're gonna miss her. No doubt about that. I'm gonna miss you guys. She's been phenomenal here at the University of Colorado. That puts a wrap on the Buffalo Stampede. As soon as that camera's up, we're gonna start crying. Uh, we'll talk to you next time.